Okay, let's cut to the chase. I didn't care about the pay-per-view. I've been forgetting. And I, the reason I'm doing this is because I've done this at least four times. And I keep botching at this part because it angers me that with some stress I've been under, trying to make something for my cousin, trying to do the other channel, trying to produce something for that, and some other stuff that's been going on in the background, I've been getting stressed out, which has been messing with my depression and has been pissing me off. So, I haven't been paying attention to the pay-per-view. I miss Super Fight. I still haven't even had a chance to see it yet. I, I guess I haven't had no interest. Then when it came to this pay-per-view of the Elimination Chamber, I thought it was this Sunday just passed. So, my expectation this pay-per-view should be here. And it's here. Right here. It should be here, but it's here. Not because of super hyping. That's just average. They have been booking the pay-per-view like crap. I saw what happened on this Raw, making Becky Lynch look bad. And when you see this show, there's only one thing I liked. One. One thing I liked. Just one. But when you see the show, you can see that still they're not booking things right. Opening at the show. Charlotte. The most disappointing thing of the entire show by herself. No McMahon. No Triple H. No Vince. No Vince. No, nobody. Just her. But I will say this about Charlotte. Lately, Charlotte was wearing a lot of dark makeup. Making it look like a goth girl. And to be honest, she don't look good as a goth girl. Let, let's, let's be 100% honest here. Charlotte's not an ugly looking woman. She's a good okay to a good-looking woman if she does the makeup and doodle herself up right. But I'm sure someone must have told her, Boobala, Booby, honey, do not wear dark stuff again on your freaking face. You look like you, you're sick. Wear light-colored makeup. Make yourself look bright and cute. And there you go. She looked better than she normally does. Good for you, Charlotte. But here's the problem. No Becky. No Becky. No Triple H. No Steph. No Vince. Just her. Yeah, she got some heat. But honestly, after what they did on Raw, and I, I, I'm going to elaborate on this as quickly as possible because I don't want to make this more than 20 minutes. Let's, let's be honest here. I do not see anything good about the match between possible Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Ronda Rousey. If Becky is really kept in the match. That's if she is. Because it's obvious they wanted Charlotte. I've been saying this for a long time. Becky has never been what they wanted. They've always wanted Charlotte and Ronda Rousey. But if Becky's still in the match, I just do not see them booking it properly. Not because of how they're putting Charlotte into the match or Charlotte even being involved. It's just how they build up into the match with all three of these women. And I just see it as trash. And then you're still dealing with... You're still dealing with... A Charlotte Flair that is incredibly botchy. If she's not, if she's not working with someone who knows her very well. There's only one person that does in that match and that's Becky. You're dealing with a Ronda Rousey that... Yes, she's getting better but she still acts like an MMA fighter. That is trying to learn how to be a pro wrestler. She's only been in the business barely a year, maybe a year and a half. Barely there. And even though she's good, she's not good enough to really make it look right. And then you have Becky Lynch, the fan favorite, who can work with anyone. She can adjust on the fly, but she can't make a match 100% perfect if she's not involved in every aspect of it, which I don't believe they want her to be. So you got all these elements that I do not see working. So when I look at this promo segment and no Becky coming from the crowd to go and beat up on Charlotte for coming out means nothing. When it comes down to it, Charlotte coming out with Vince on Monday should have sparked a fire under Becky's ass. Making her so angry she don't care about being suspended. She'll still come to the arenas and kick someone's ass. That is the only way to make her look right going into the match at WrestleMania. And they're not doing it. They're not going to do it. If they do it at the very end, it still means nothing. So I have no interest. So this segment was the most disappointing. 
Let's move on to the video packages that the women of SmackDown Live for the Tag Team Elimination Chamber match was shown. All the women had the moment. Naomi and Mella, I think the reason they put Naomi and Mella together is that they're both two former dancers that one worked through basketball, another one through basketball and football. That, I think, is the reason why they stuck Naomi and Mella together. They're both former dancers that became wrestlers. And to be honest, I don't like that. Look, you can say a lot about Mella, but Mella's better as a manager. Naomi is better as a wrestler. She's not good as a manager. It's just Naomi's not good as a manager. She's better as a wrestler. She's more skilled. Then you got Mella who's better as a manager than a wrestler. That's just the way it is. You play to your strengths. And I just see them both. And it just doesn't seem to work. It's a mixed match. Then there was something that was strange. When it came to Tamina and Nia Jax. What was that interaction? Nia wouldn't even let Tamina talk. Tamina was trying to say something. And Nia was just reciting what she saw. And instead of shutting her mouth. And I'm not saying Tamina can talk. She can't. But why allow Tamita to talk at all? It felt, and I'm being honest here, this 100% honesty the way I feel right now. Tamina's dissatisfied. They've done nothing with her. It's not the point that she sucks as a wrestler. You had women who has been worse than Tamina. I'm sorry. Mela can't wrestle. Mela cannot wrestle very well at all. And I'm not against Mela. She's in barely, when she's at her best, She's an okay wrestler, but she's a manager trying to be a wrestler. Tamina is not a great wrestler, but she's never been pushed to really try harder. She's always been stuck in the same position as muscle outside the ring. So why is she going to freaking care? So the way it looks to me, Tamina is just going through the motion. She doesn't care anymore. She doesn't give a fuck anymore. She gets those titles. She doesn't gonna mean anything. So the way she was talking was frustration. Now, you guys are going to say, who gives a frack about Tamina? I do. The woman should have already had one title once in her life. She should have been given one title. Even if it's transitional. Having the tag titles is bullshit. She should have had a singles title, be a transitional champion for a month or two. Then at least she can say she had it. She's not doing anything and she's now showing her frustration, even if she can't do anything, due to the fact she probably re-signed a contract. She's stuck with nowhere to go. Now, let's get to the Usos with Mick Miz TV. Why did they go there? Leave it as Miz TV. It was better that way. Then you have the Usos coming out. Was the segment good? No. I know the Usos like to play around and then they become serious. The play around part seemed to be forced. Didn't like it. When they became serious and wanted to show who they really are as the best tag team. That's when it felt real. And then it just felt awkward. With, with When it came down to it. It should have been the Miz who had been allowed to talk. Instead of Shane. Because Shane made it look awkward. And then once they both got kicked in the face. And I'm talking about Miz and Shane. It felt better. But it felt awkward. That just felt awkward. I'm not against Miz and... and <sighs> Calm. Look, Shane and Miz, they're entertaining to a certain extent. But that felt forced for the Usos and Shane and Miz. It just felt forced. Something felt forced and then it just became awkward and I just didn't like it. I'm just being honest. Yeah, the crowd loves the Usos and I'm cool with that. But I'm just going to be honest. Now, um, let's see... There wasn't that much on the show, honestly. You got the six woman tag, which states that all six women are in there. Whoever gets pinned first gets into the elimination chamber first. Now, um, Sasha and Bailey are the first ones in there. Now they gotta wait for the next tag team. And here's where it becomes a problem. I didn't really care that much about the iconics, the gorgeous women. But they stayed out of the match. They didn't get in it at all. They stayed out. So it was Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville versus Mella and Naomi. And here was the weak part of it 
of this entire thing. If you put not great wrestlers with good wrestlers, it doesn't look good. If you put great wrestlers with good wrestlers, it's okay. The problem here is there's only one good wrestler in the group of them. And that's Naomi. And that, I'm not saying Naomi's the best wrestler there is. She's not. She's a good wrestler. Naomi is a good wrestler. Sonya Deville, I think, is just behind Naomi. Everybody else is not good wrestlers. They were not good. So this match did not look good. The only time it looked all right was when Naomi and Sonya Deville were in the ring together. When it came to Mella with Sonya and Mella with Mandy Rose, it looked botchy. It looked sluggish. And then with the Iconics not getting involved, which you could say it was better that way, it just felt sloppy. It did. Now, mind you, Naomi finally got the pin on Mandy Rose, which hopefully ends their feud. Since they don't want to do anything with them, just end it. Let Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville start the show. In that elimination chamber with Bailey and Sasha. I know that's, that's not good, but still, that's what you get. That's it. End the story. Now, gauntlet match. The gauntlet Let's be honest here. You know why I'm here. You know, my brothers and sisters, who is the one who has been the most underrated brother in the WWE? And that has been Kofi Kingston, baby. Oh, yeah. He's in my face. I'm sure I did that. I have to do that. Because if I didn't, I think I wouldn't be able to look at myself in editing. Oh, my gosh. Kofi for the win. I made a um, debate of the week on Kobe Kingston being one of the most underrated wrestlers they have for so many years. He'd been there 11 years. He had one shot at the WWE title. One. And because of one person's attitude, he lost that opportunity. And that's Randy Orton. He lost it. That, that just disappeared. Now, mind you, if he really hurt Randy, or Randy just didn't have an interest in his ass, it makes no difference. Kofi's chance to become a champion went away. And the only way he's won any other gold has been for the U.S., IC, and Tag Time. Look, this is what this man has. As a U.S. champion, he's a three-time champion. As an IC champion, he's a four-time champion. He's a seven-time tag champion. Four times on Raw. And three times on SmackDown. Seven times. He's had 14 reigns. But never had a chance at the WWE ta title. Not tag title. The WWE title itself. He came close. Somebody got pissed off. And it's been over. Now, let's, let's be realistic here. Was this a Seth Rollins moment? Honestly, yes and no. I'm being honest here. It felt like a Seth Rollins moment in this match. When he started with Daniel Bryan, they lasted nearly 20 minutes, maybe 30. I can't remember how long. And he beat Daniel Bryan. I did not expect him to win that match and move on to the next stage against whoever was coming. And it was a great match. You can see how talented he is. And he won. And I'm going, what the frack? I'm trying not to curse. That's why I'm saying frack. What? Are you serious? He won that match. Okay. Something different. All right, Kobe moves on. But it is something you would expect from a Kobe to actually be able to make it past and he's a Daniel Bryan because he's a good damn wrestler. But when he went up against Jeff, I was expecting, well, Jeff is going to win. It's going to end. Nope. He beats him as well. I'm going, okay, now I'm getting interested. I am interested. And then he went up against Joe. And unfortunately, some of my stream kept glitching out. Either the sound messed up or the video messed up. And I was missing on and off pieces of it. But I got enough of the gist of it that no one expects Kobe to get that far. Even though this thing, he's really putting on a caveat. You got to put a caveat on Kobe. He could win this. And he beats Samoa Joe. And then gets put to sleep. Twice. And I'm going... Are you 
you serious? That. Damn. Then you get to AJ. And this was the part I loved the most. Even though the stream did fade out a bit, unfortunately, I didn't see the part about AJ trying to let Kobe walk away because he was beaten up and injured. When I came back is when Kobe finally regained himself and he pretty much said, No, I want this match. Start this match. He gets up in AJ's face and he says simply, I'm here. I've been waiting for this. This is my time. I think I got to think in my face of him getting in AJ's face. I'm sure I have it. If I don't, I'm going to get that image. This was showing how honestly, that, let's be honest here. Kobe has been passed up for many years. Many years. If it was because he was black, fine. If it was because they didn't think he had enough talent, fine. If you think that he wasn't entertaining, fine. If people just don't give a damn about Kobe, fine. But you cannot say the man doesn't have talent. And when it's time to translate that now in his career into showing emotion, that segment with him of that entire gauntlet match with AJ proved that if you gave him an opportunity at the main title, he could do something with it. Even if it's a transitional thing, it's something you can say with him. So when it came down to it, AJ finally beat him. He pat him on the back saying, you did damn well. And then you got the rest of New Day literally running the ass down there to grab him and to, to bring him back, to take care of him. And here's the thing that just makes it I ironic about what's about to happen in the Elimination Chamber. That makes me think this. Because at the very end, when AJ was waiting for Randy Orton, I had this thought, he's coming up behind him. Why are they staying on AJ's face and not... <coughs> excuse me. Not zooming back. He's going to nail him from behind. And guess what he does? And he gets the pin. And now Randy Orton is the sixth person added to that match. This is what I'm thinking. I'm getting close to 20 minutes, but this is what I'm thinking. I know this wouldn't happen, but this is... Visualize, ladies and gentlemen. Visualize. We have the Elimination Chamber. And the two last people to be in that chamber is Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston. The very situation, literally 10 years ago in 2009, 10 years ago is when Kofi had his shot. To possibly go after the WWE title, which was the mid-card title at the time. Which pretty much still is. Universal titles with Brock. That's how they book it. Fine. But this is an opportunity to right a wrong. I know it won't happen. I know they're not going to go with Kofi as champ. I want to see him as champ. But it would be the most ironic and iconic moment that a lot of hardcore fans know. That Kobe Kingston got screwed over by Randy Orton. Either because he hurt him or he pissed him off in some way. It doesn't make a difference. Randy hurt his opportunity to get that title once in his career. He's been there for quite a while. He's been there for a while. I think it was like 2010 or 11. He had his chance to get that title. And Randy ruined it for him. And now, 11 years later, since the time he started, you have those two facing one another again. That would be an iconic moment for the Elimination Chamber that they end that match with those two. And if Kofi won that way, it would make up for everything that happened. Particularly if Randy actually hugged him afterward, which I know he wouldn't because he's got to be in character. But if he went out of character and actually hugged his ass... I would respect that from Randy. But that's just me. You guys tell me below. Have a good day. I'm about to say something else, but now I forgot what it was. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.